Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube. Covering Knowledge 15. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante. We're here at Knowledge 15, a year after Knowledge 2014. I kind of spaced on that a little bit before, but uh, we are here live at the Mandalay Bay. Robert Young is here. He's uh, with IDC, an analyst with IDC, covering the ITM, uh, ITSM space. Robert, welcome to theCUBE. It's good to see you. Thank you. So, tell us a little bit more about your coverage area sure. at IDC. Sure, so um, I'm covering uh, endpoint device and IT service management. So I do uh, all things service desk related, uh, IT asset management, software distribution, and I also cover client virtualization software. So I cover all things kind of BDI, desktop uh, virtualization, application virtualization. So I look at a lot around how cloud, mobile, uh, social, big data, are those types of technologies are impacting how IT is delivering their systems and services in probably more importantly, how that is changing, how, con how the end user is consuming those services. So when I think about things like, you know, IT uh, service management, project portfolio management, kind of, you know, the, 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 the old line business, sort of the, the, the legacy businesses and, and how they've now evolved, ServiceNow is the anti-opposite of of that, there's a company comes in, everybody thinks, okay, they're just a small little niche ITSM vendor, and sure. then they explode into this new base. So what's happening in the marketplace? How would you characterize it? Um, it's kind of an apples and oranges comparison, really, to compare ServiceNow with, with some other, the traditional you know, project management guys, for example, sure. but how do you look at the market? How do you sort of characterize ServiceNow? Sure, well, I think one of the things that's changed, and I mentioned some of those technologies up front, you know, that, that, um, that, are, that I think are changing uh, the landscape around cloud and mobile and these. Um, I think it's important for IT now to have a better understanding of, this, of the services that are actually running on their back-end infrastructure, right? So being service aware, I think, is how IT organizations have a, a stronger value proposition going forward. I mean, in the past, we've always just kind of, you know, understood that the, the, what, what systems were there, keep them running, you know, we get alerts when they're down, hopefully, uh, maybe not. <laughs> so having a, a real deep understanding of what business services are relying on those, on the backend infrastructure is huge. So I think the, the ties to ITOM um, are becoming more and more important as the infrastructure get more, gets more complex, more cloud, more hybrid in nature. So that's an, uh, an element, I think, of why ServiceNow is starting to, to show up, you know, outside of just the kind of traditional IT service desk software. Um, and then this extending out into line of business, right? Uh, understanding that, okay, IT has spent a lot, many years developing processes, th work workflows, uh, you know, these things like ITIL and, and, and COVID on how to really manage processes to uh, ensure productivity. And taking those out from IT and actually getting those into the lines of business, I think are the ways that ServiceNow is starting to attract a bigger audience than perhaps what, you, what you're referring to when, when you're just strictly going at IT with, a, with a, a, a service desk solution. So how should we look at the market? I mean, should we look at it as a service management market, which is kind of an umbrella, or is it sort of this collection of other you know, tool sets? How do you guys sort of, what's the taxonomy look like? Yeah, so the taxonomy right now is that um, until it's material, uh, the, um, the amount of revenue that's being generated from those, those um, offerings that are outside of IT, then we typically will put them into what I, is my problem management market. Um, once it becomes material and or a, a separately skewed product, um, then we will we'll generally look at, okay, well maybe these need to go in some markets that are outside of you know, just the problem management that's specific for, for IT and go into some other areas like human resource management and customer service. There are some other markets inside of IT that we can allocate some of that revenue to as it grows. But you know, this is something that we're, you know, this is growing, you know, growing for us, you know, in, in, at IDC. These are conversations that we need to have as, 
as the technology landscape changes. And we'll continue to kind of look at this and, and as it evolves and keep a, a focus on it. And we'll do what, we, you know, what makes sense as the market evolves. Um, ServiceNow certainly has a, a big presence in this particular area of extending out to line of business and having you know packaged products and offerings around that you know it's been mentioned here before we're you know we're from some in the keynote I think it was mentioned this morning that this it goes this is goes beyond just taking a a, a IT service desk solution and forcing it into a, a line of business right these are actually offerings that have capabilities that are separate there they have workflows they, 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 there's just more maturity around the offering um, than some of the the competitors that you may be speaking about that you know they, they maybe have some language around why you know that they can have capabilities to go into HR, but are they actually mature products that are designed for those? For those well, you and I were in the analyst meeting yesterday. We had you know Jen Stroud came in. And she's an HR pro. She, right. You know, she's not an IT person. Sure. And so that's an example of you know somebody's running that business who's you know, she speaks HR language, not, absolutely not necessarily IT language. So, but if we look at that sort of core ITSM business, is it, is it is it growing? It is growing. It is, yeah. okay. It is growing. So, so ServiceNow is not only growing, and they're obviously gaining share, they ain't growing at 50% a year, but right. so, so yeah. it, it, they're gaining, ServiceNow is gaining share, but the market is still growing. It is still growing, yeah. Okay, and you expect it to continue to grow. I do expect it to con continue to grow. Uh, you know, more and more of these services, you know, I think there was a misconception when, when cloud was really starting to take off that, oh, well we don't need to worry about ITIL or ITSM anymore because everything's just going to be out in the cloud and we won't have to worry about it. And I think as m organizations are maturing and bringing in more cloud, they're re the savvy IT leaders are realizing that, wait a minute, <laughs> I do care where those workloads run um, I do care about the incidents that are happening inside of those, inside of that infrastructure, whether or not I own it or not. It's important for me to be able to show the business why I have that workload running in the cloud versus running on-prem. We, we talk a lot about IT as a service and running IT as a service. And what that means to us really is about being a service broker, understanding that why certain workloads make sense to be on-prem, why certain workloads make sense to be in the cloud, and actually being able to pull metrics from those services and show it back to the line of business in a way that's easy for them to consume and say, here's, you know, here's how your workloads have been running. Here's the performance issues that we had. We had some SLA breaches. Here's what we did to resolve them. Here's how we went back and, and corrected this with the vendor. They want more insight into what's going on in those workloads, whether they're running on their, in their cloud or not. And a lot of that is funneled, being funneled through a service desk type solution. Even the procurement of some of those resources through a self-service catalog is now being done through, a, so the service, service desk uh, service management solution has got far more broad than what, we, what, what it was in the past. This is really becoming more of a central hub for all of the IT resources that a, uh, that a company wants to consume. This is kind of the entry point to get to those. So independent of where the code lives, the technology of cloud or on-premises or whatever, the, the, the process, the business process, the people uh, issues are still inside the company. Absolutely. And that's really what you're saying ServiceNow is dealing with. Right. Um, so you, you talked about the areas you cover, cloud, mobile, social, data, you guys call it third platform. Absolutely. Is ServiceNow third platform? And what makes them third platform? Uh, yeah, I would absolutely say they're third platform. I mean, they have the vast majority of their instances are, 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 are cloud hosted. Um, so, you know, to have a, this type of a, of a robust solution um, running virtually 100% in the cloud. I mean, there are some on-premise instances of, of service now, but essentially all in the cloud and have this level of growth, I think speaks volumes to third platform. Uh, you know, these, these uh, ServiceNow's traditional buyer up until this point has been largely IT, right? And who has been probably the most reluctant business unit inside of, of an organization to go cloud? Probably IT, right? They have, they, they have a lot of concerns around it. And then look, but, but look at this growth, right? Look at how ServiceNow has been able to capture a lot of market share in, in this domain with essentially a, a cloud first uh, product. Uh, so, and then their mobile capabilities, their support for, for cloud uh, orchestration to be able to provision resources in the cloud from, from ServiceNow to have this access on mobile devices and be able to execute these types of commands or as an end user be able to to provision resources from a mobile device. These are all 
third platform stories and you know the collaboration and the social that's embedded in these solutions these are all third platform principles and we're seeing them play out and you know the vendors that are getting on board with these types of technologies third platform technologies if you look across our markets at IDC you see them growing the folks that are are are, are laggers in this you're you're seeing the impacts of that as well so ServiceNow is this sort of interesting unicorn and particularly as an analyst you're the ServiceNow analyst, I presume, at IDC, right? If I said, who's the ServiceNow analyst? You'd be it, is that Currently, right? Currently, yeah. I think that's a fair okay. statement. Okay, so you're the expert on right. ServiceNow. Yet, ServiceNow is now edging into this app creator market. Sure. It's a That's a platform as a service right. space. Are you, a, the, are you the PaaS guy? No, no, no so, I'm, right. So that, that's, that's kind fair. of an interesting right. dynamic. It is. Market shifts, you guys deal with this all the time. Sure. I'm sure ServiceNow talks to you about this. Hey, we're different than everybody else. Create a category for us, but we can't just create a category for No, a but there are one, categories that exist currently that we will, you know, we put already, them into. Yes, absolutely. And you so, will see, see ServiceNow um, showing up in, in, in additional markets and other than just the problem management space that, that I that I hold on to. Right? So does that drag you into those markets or do you stop and say, okay, hand off to your colleagues and I mean, isn't it kind of natural if you're the ServiceNow analyst that yeah. you sort of follow <laughs> where they go? Yeah. I think so for quite a while. Yeah. I mean, you know, I know the technology very well. I've been right. following ServiceNow for, for a few years now. And, and so I think for the time being, that will probably be the model. But again, you know, we'll, we'll see where this takes us. Just like ServiceNow is moving into new markets, that forces us to look at where, where we place them in, in our taxonomy and into our markets. And we work closely with ServiceNow to identify that. And, you know, we have conversations internally of how that will hand, how that'll happen. But yeah, I will say this anecdotally, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to start seeing more you know, IDC analysts at these types of events other than just myself. I, I think that's certainly in the realm of possibility as this evolution continues on. Yeah. So you got Republicans, you got Democrats, you got independents. As analysts, we try to be independent. And so, um, <laughs> but I got to ask you, this whole multi-tenant versus multi-instance discussion that's going on, Pat Casey put, put it forth today in the keynotes. Um, ServiceNow used to pretty much not talk about that right. inside plumbing, right? And now they're being more forceful about it. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, I found it interesting. You know, I, it, you're right. It's it's an argument that was kind of like drum up you know, a, a few years back, and I haven't heard it kind of resurface in quite a while. Um, they brought up some great points on on why one may be better over over another, but I've also heard those arguments on the other side. You know, it's not really something that you know um, I hear a lot from my customers. You know, my, the the clients that I speak to asking a whole lot about. Um, but to the points that were made this afternoon are certainly um, interesting, and I think that um, it, it, it may have, you know, may increase some of those <laughs> phone so, calls that I'm getting. The premise that Pat was putting forth is that, that many of the SMB clouds are not uh, suited for the enterprise. Right. Um, number one, he definitely by implication and even explicitly, essentially said multi-instance is going to be, you know, better, more reliable, et cetera. Right. What's the trade-off? Is it cost? Is it efficiency? Is it yeah, you know, scale. I mean, you know, I, I question that. I mean, because there are quite a few uh, vendors that, out there that are, and they show them up on the screen today, right? That are, are running um, multi-tenant, and they're highly entrenched in enterprise organizations, and they're and, right, and they're able to scale. Um, and have I heard any kind of? Big concerns around the, some of the issues that were brought up today. I haven't. So you know, to, in my so some religion to it maybe. I think in, so. In yeah, yeah, design, I think it's a great way philosophy. To, and I, I think so. Dark is a good opinion. thing if, in some cases, and maybe this is one of those cases, uh, right? Again, it's not something that I'm hearing a lot about from the customers that I'm talking to as a, a big differentiator on why they should go with one solution over another. Um, on that, yeah. I remember when I first started. Uh, learning about service now, I said, wow, this would be awesome for mid-sized companies. Um, not small guys like us. A company like IDC, you know, you start to get into the point <laughs> of, where well, you're big enough, you know? Right. And so what do you make of Express? How yeah. does that affect the market, the size, the TAM? What do you, what do you make of all that? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm happy to see a product like that come to market. I, I think that it's great to, you know, evolve the product, the ServiceNow product, just like any other product, right? Uh, folks are asking for these things to be added and it's important that vendors get them out there. But there's also that mid-market that is looking to grow, but they're just not quite there yet. And they, more and more, they, do, they don't want to pay for features and functions that they're not using. 
you know, back to things that I, that I am hearing about from, cl from clients on concerns is, why am I paying up front for features and functions that I'm not road mapping out for another three to five years, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I get the evolution, but we're not there yet, but now I have to pay for these. Mid-market is looking at that hard. They don't want to pay for the extra features and functions. They want to evolve. So I like the story of having this type of solution um, for folks that fall into that category that still want to get into this, but they're not quite as mature yet, and they're able to grow into this platform, I, I think was, is, is, is neat. Um, how about mobile? Um, it was probably a couple years ago, Fred Luddy started talking about you know, mobile, iPad apps, et cetera. We thought HTML5 would sort of be the, the cure-all. Right. Um, it looks like integration with cameras and other mobile right. you know, capabilities is becoming more and more important. What's your take on mobile in this space generally and specifically ServiceNow's approach to mobile? You know, I, I, they need to go in that way. I mean, service management in general is about being mobile, right? It's about taking, making processes more efficient. We talk a lot about HR throughout this conference, right? A lot about onboarding. More and more employees that are going to be onboarded are not going to be patient with waiting long periods of time to get their, 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 their equipment to get onboarded, right? So what does that mean? And they may not even work within the four walls of the, of, the, of the corporate office, right? They may be remote, they may be telecommuters. I mean, millennials nowadays are more and more wanting that kind of fluid work, work environment, right? They want to be able to work from anywhere, anytime, on any device. And that will mean accessing these types of resources that, that we've been talking about here. Being able to request something from HR, being able to request something from, 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 from IT, and get it in a way that's efficient and consumer-like experience. And if you want top level, if you're going out and you're trying to recruit top minds in your industry, more and more of the folks that are coming out of university that are the top minds that you're going to want to recruit are going to be looking for that. And if they go into an organization and it's, oh, sit down here, you know, oh, we don't have your laptop ready, you know, you're going to sit idle for a few days, oh, you're going to be at this mandatory training, so you're going to have to travel back in next week. These types of things, you know, a, a person that's coming onto a, a modern organization that, that they're going to view as being, you know, up to date and a company that they want to work for, to have those types of processes and not have them mobile, uh, that's not going to fly as well as it has in the past. Yeah. So Robin, let's say you're, if you're consulting with a CIO or an organization that's struggling with service management generally. Forget about the products, forget about the companies, forget sure. all that. Um, let's assume they're going to pick the best, whatever, for, for them. Right. There's horses for courses. But they're struggling, um, they're inefficient, their productivity, you know, is hurting, as Frank talked about this morning. Um, they want to transform right. their organization. They come to you and say, help us. What should we be doing? Where should we start? Where do we want to go um, over the next, where should we be going over the next five to seven years? What would you tell them? I, 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 I'm sorry, did you say the CIO was saying this? Yes. Yep. I like the messaging around understanding service consumption. I think that going forward, you. IT is going to have to have a real razor focus on the services that it's delivering and when, where, and how they're being consumed. Measuring that, because if IT is spending the business's dollars on procuring the resources, maintaining the resources, managing the resources to deliver a service, it better be being consumed by the business. And that will be, I think, the measure of IT's value going forward. Adoption. Adoption. Um, because get, if they're not being adopted, IT needs to be aware of that and pull the plug on them quick. It's just like if you were in a store and you were stocking shelves, you're going to stock those shelves with things that are going to sell and you're going to take the things off that aren't. And you're going to make those items that are selling on the center shelf where the eyes are on them, right? IT needs to think that way. They need to think more as a service provider, more as a, sell, a, a seller of goods that the business user is going to consume. And they need to be uh, thinking about that, even in the, the world of ITOM, understanding, well, why do we need certain types of infrastructure on-prem when we could be hosting this somewhere else? Understanding what they need to run those services. And it may not mean always having something, having th those resources in the cloud. It may not always mean having them on-prem. It may be a hybrid mix of both. But they need to have visibility into those. Yep. All right, run against the clock, Robert. Uh, last sure. question is maybe some of the research that you're working on, um, some of the things that you want to highlight, some of the things that you're doing you know, with your research agenda, maybe talk about that a little bit. Sure, so I, I published a Marketscape on the service desk area uh, just uh, about six months ago, last, uh, late last summer. 
Um, so I encourage folks to look at that that are in the IT service management space. Um, I, I highlight some of the, the, what I think is important to look at from a product feature function and also roadmap. You know, think about where you're going to be four or five years out. It is important. You, I get the point that you probably don't want to buy the features and functions of, up front, but at least be thinking about it because you will need to evolve. And um, so I, I, would say I would point folks to that, to that research. And um, you know, again, I'm, I'm happy to have these conversations with IT buyers and vendors alike on where I see um, the market going. How do people get in touch with you? Uh, Twitter handle? Twitter, I'm on Twitter, ryoung78. Uh, so you can reach out to me that way. My email is ryoung uh, at idc.com. So you know, feel free to drop me a line anytime and welcome the conversation. All right, Robert Young, thanks very much for coming You're to theCUBE. You're welcome, thank really you for having me, I appreciate All it. All right, keep right there everybody, we'll be back. The Knowledge 15 right after this word. This is theCUBE, we're live from Las Vegas. Be right back.